We're back here at the Wanamaker Tulsa Arms Show. I'm with Jim Sapika. He's the director of the NRA National Firearms Museum. Jim, we've come to Tulsa because there's just treasures here. There's so many interesting things we thought we'd come here, as we've done before, and do some special curator's corners. You're, you're, you're gracious enough to, to, to host us and help us out. And what's the first, well, besides a treasure, you found a treasure for a firearm, you found a friend. Who do we have here? This is my friend Dan Cole, and uh, we used to be in the old gun selling business together before I came and ran the museum, and now he's, uh, he's continuing with Cole's Old Town Station, armsbid.com, does uh, firearm specialty auctions. And I saw this neat gun on his table, and this is such a historic model. Uh, I, I asked him if we could take a, a little footage of it uh, and let people see one uh, up close right. and how they work and everything. What do we got here? This is a Smith & Wesson magazine pistol, and uh, uh, it's nicknamed the Volcanic. And Dan, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about where it came from and uh, what kind of gun it is? Well, this came out of a collection, um, a long time collection, and it's a 31 caliber uh, Magazine pistol, Jim. Exactly, exactly. Has the nickname of the Volcanic, and this is at an. I was going to say, why the nickname? Go well, it's, it came at a very important time in firearms evolution. This is uh, uh, the 1850s, and the drives then are to try and get repeating firearms, new mechanisms for repeating firearms, and the self-contained cartridge okay, instead big. of percussion guns right. with a with a separate lead ball and separate gunpowder and a primer and all fumbly. Yeah, huge development there. A couple of guys got together and uh, came up with the idea for a magazine-fed pistol. And the way they made their cartridge was they took a lead bullet with a hollow base and they packed the gunpowder in the base of that hollow bullet and then glued the primer right onto it mm -hmm. to where there wasn't a separate metal case, but it was a self-contained unit. Wow. Now, it wasn't very powerful, and this was a little 31 caliber uh, uh, pistol, but it was quite a breakthrough. And it's a lever-action pistol. Uh, there's a tube magazine underneath the barrel, and this is a little bit fumbly, but I'm going to try and show you how it loads and unloads. All right. Twist a little thing there, and then that, get it all the way out, and that piece just twists to the side wow. to load your volcanic cartridges, because <laughs> it shoots like a volcano. <laughs> That's it, just one after the other, boom, 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 boom. And that was a novelty then. So you load those in that tube magazine, <laughs> And then after you've got that, uh, after you've got your pistol loaded, then you load around using your finger lever here oh, wow. to open up, and a uh, <laughs> volcanic ball comes up in there, closes, it's lifted in, and then you're ready to shoot. You're and then the you've got, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the two guys, and this was a failure. They have made uh, fewer than two thousand of them. And they gave up on the idea. They said, mm. this is not going to work. Uh, these two partners and their, their partnership went bust. Uh, they sold that design to a shirt manufacturer who saw some promise in mm -hmm. this design. Now, the two guys were Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson. Mm -hmm. Their first partnership making Volcanics <laughs> was a failure. The shirt manufacturer they sold this to was Oliver Winchester. Oh, Right. And he, familiar name yeah, 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 yeah. He thought that lever action design was a good idea, and he made some rifles that uh, came to be very well known. So uh, you can see how important this model is in firearms history. It's a self-contained cartridge. It's the repeater. It's the start of two great firearms companies, the Smith & Wesson. They came back with a second partnership and a revolver, and they got going then. Uh, Oliver Winchester took this and, uh, with a couple of iterations, got mm -hmm. it into the famous lever action That's rifle. Yeah. Which is amazing. You look at this, and, and we talk about this, oddage or a failure, but it, it was a failure in itself, but not a failure to the evolution of firearms history. So many exactly. more things exactly. happen right mm -hmm. here. Very pivotal, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a breakthrough model, highly sought after by collectors. Dan, what do you expect this to sell for at auction? You know, Jim, we've got an estimate of somewhere in that five to ten thousand dollar range. And on that's this. very reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they certainly bring that, and uh, there are a number of different variations. Uh, there are a couple successor companies that made them too, mm -hmm. but the very early Smith and Wesson, I think, is the mm -hmm. the most desirable one. Wow. Uh, made a larger one in forty one caliber, caliber. Made mm -hmm. some carbines, mm -hmm. uh, but a very neat gun. I mm -hmm. thank you for letting us take a look at it. Thank uh, you, Jim. 
always good to see you. And it's nice to see you, too. Uh, well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for bringing us this, this wonderful treasure here. Special Curator Corners right here from the Tulsa Arms Show. We'll be back with you.